welcome 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 everyone gonna give a few minutes of everybody coming in but while uh people are coming in uh for anybody that watches this on the replay we are streaming this not only on facebook but also on youtube so there might be comments that you can't see that we address we will do our best to put any questions, comments on the screen as they happen. So please put those in caps for us. And um, that way it'll call our attention to it. Um, so if we address something that you don't see, it might be on another format. Whew. You okay? Just hot. I know. you. Today's been crazy. As we're waiting for people, we'll just kind of like talk about today. Um, today, like, is at the end of a crazy week. He just got back from Utah, right? Mm -hmm. um, he went to Utah with our son, Junior, for BYU football camp. And that was a really great experience for him, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and got to visit with our Redmond Real Estate family. Um, we're affiliates with a few different uh, companies, but they're the only ones that we will actually say is a family. They're family to us. Um, and you got to kind of like see them, hang out with them, and go to Junior's football camp every day. What was your impression about the football camp? Um, as, as we're waiting for people to come in. So that, that's like the newest thing this past week. And Junior, he is a quarterback. He is the, one of the younger <clears throat> quarterbacks for his um, high school, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to be a junior, but he's been the, the quarterback um, all last year, right? Yes. Uh, I'm, he, I'm proud of him. He was supposed to be... He was a freshman on the previous year. He was supposed to be towards halfway through the season, be a bumped up to varsity, but he had a high ankle sprain. And so he set out most of his freshman year out. And then this I'm curious year. curious how his freshman year would have been if he could have played. This year, uh, he was on varsity. Uh, started and started over as a junior and a senior. They wind up going, leaving the school and going to somewhere else Why, and still not starting there. Uh, but he had great accolades and stuff. His mom has been pushing him very hard and putting him in all these camps and stuff. Uh, this camp was um, referred to us uh, by uh, Redmond Harvey Scott. And uh, so we flew out there uh, Sunday, flew back, flew back uh, Thursday night, and uh, it was pretty good. The weather was perfect. Uh, he's very, my son is very cocky. Uh, oh, where did he get that? From you. And, <laughs> and, uh, but the weather was nice. He didn't like the weather because it was in the mid-70s, high 70s. And then he didn't like the no, he he wanted hot. Oh, hot. that's right. He, yeah. he you said he was saying he was cold. Yeah. And I was like, and so, uh, but other than that, we talked to some coaches and the trainers and some of the uh players and former players and stuff. They really liked him. We got invited to come back next year, so that'd be interesting. But I, what I think is interesting. Uh, for him and his journey is he's a honor roll student. Um, he is in choir. He is just a, a really intelligent kid. What's up, bro? Hey, bro. This is not probably the most popular uh, night um, for a live. I know it's Father's Day weekend. Um, he's not my daddy, so um, oh, I'm your baby. Hey, and none of my kids are by you. We're we're not really celebrating because uh, I'm, you know, following how Mother's Day went. Um, so it's a regular weekend for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. So if anybody's watching on the replay, we normally do this on the first Saturday of each month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Just kind of shoot the stuff and talk about our what's been going on for the previous uh, week and whatnot. Today we got some interesting topics, what we've been up to, along with uh, some good things that had just finally been uploaded uh, and, um, I guess, active now. Wait, you talking about our website? Yeah, I was going to oh. lead into that. <laughs> I was could, like, what, what are you, you talking could, about? I'm oh, sorry. You can tell that somebody's never done, kind of like do a hook and sinker with people. But anyway. Yeah. So uh, first question is, what was interesting about today for y'all? For us, we did a lot of stuff, got a lot of stuff done, um, did two videos, got a lot of stuff accomplished. He's feeling himself. He, he did two videos today. And they're going to be doing a part one of <laughs> two video later on tonight. So after. I'm going to be busy for a whole week editing. Yep. Yep. Put some videos out or be I, I'm in the middle of preserving yep. our garden, yep. harvesting, like, yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> My daughter's coming from Hawaii this week. She is a tattoo artist. And um, I just told him, I was like, yeah, I got all this stuff to do, but my time with her is going to be priority. So this week, like, I'll see how it goes. Um, but I don't get to see my kids very so often. So you got a harvest of a kushaw squash? Kushaw? I don't, kushaw? 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 I'm not familiar with that squash. Is that a summer squash or a winter squash? Let me check it out real quick. Yeah, I didn't have any new harvest today, um, but I did. Um, I did post on Instagram. Um, Ooh, I, that's a funky looking squash. Oh, is that the colorful striped one? Yeah. It looks like it's. It must be in like the butternut family because they have. It's a, a winter reddish. squash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our tromboncino is kind of like in that same kind of thing. Like, can you harvest it early and use it? The reason I like the tromboncino squash. Um, or the zucchino revacante squash is I can harvest <laughs> it um, early and treat it like a zucchini or I can let it harden off and treat it like a butternut. I really like the, the dual purpose and I really like um, squashes, squash, uh, I don't know how to say that, um, that are repellent to the squash bugs. Yeah. Like they're very hardy. And I kind of make fun of the zucchino rampicante. They have like a funny shape. So like I'm very immature about that. Group because of the shape. Yeah, because winter squash, they're, they normally go for anywhere from six to nine months. Ours don't last that long because we eat them like crazy, especially around the winter time. We make a lot of soups and roasted vegetables out of them. This will be the first year that I am actually going to be experimenting with uh, pressure canning some soups that we can do like a quick heat up because our lives are starting to get like really, really busy. Um, oftentimes, I, I find myself in the morning right after making us breakfast, uh, like putting stuff in the in the crock pot like a chicken and some of the vegetables from the garden um with some seasonings from our redmond real salt like we get really great seasonings from them and just let that slow cook and that's just kind of been my thing lately and it's just easier for us but um i am trying to kind of like get a head of the curve and um prepare i want to do some prepared meals um that i can have available to maybe go along with some of our um what do you call them the the brassica winter stuff um that, like kale I, like i want to do like i want to can some soups for this season that will go that will pair well with some of our winter gar garden harvests Ooh, rain possible Good morning, good night, uh, Chick Chick family farm from Ghana. Cool. What? Is, oh, what time is it? Is, is it there? Yeah. What time is it there? And what is your weather there right now? Uh, probably hot and more hot. Uh, where? Nag Prague, Nick Harrison from Sweden. Good morning, morning. 
Hello, hello, I should say. The um Oh, you're in Sweeney, Texas. I wonder how your weather is right now. Hot, yeah. humid. Well, I know that. That's, um, that's near Houston area, I believe. Oh, that's where we got some family. Down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, just before we came on, we were out staking down our hutches, um, our tractors, because chicken we, coops. Yeah, we have unpredictable weather and possible wind. That is supposed to hit maybe around eight o'clock. So we're trying to keep this right at the eight o'clock hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do not want to go more than an hour on this. We um, try not to normally. Normally, we try to not to go more than an hour. Off if of we it. have a guest that's really interesting, we'll go longer. Yeah. Um, but if it's just the two of us, we'll keep it to a tight uh, hour, forty-five minutes. Speaking of weather, good segue into this. So. This week we have been uh, actually started yesterday. We started consolidating, or actually earlier this week, we we'll start consolidating all of our uh, most of our coops and flocks and stuff. Yes. Uh, so we combine all of our waterfowl, all of our major egg layer that that isn't like a specialty egg layers. Because like, and I'm gonna interrupt and just say that. Of course you are. Yeah. It's my job. It's my job. Um, and I do this way more than him, like dealing with animals. Oh, I um, thought you meant interrupting. Okay, good. Oh, ahead. yeah, that's you. That's you. Um, no shame in my game. I know. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> um, but we are entering, so I, we're newbies to the whole homesteading thing, right? We're, uh, we just passed our two, we're in, we're in, in our third year. Um, the beginnings of our third year of home studying and in doing this, it's really interesting because you will have ideas. Okay. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And it's like, you need to be open, learn your property, learn your weather patterns, uh, learn all kinds of things. What works for me might not work for you an hour for me. Right. Or even, you know, on the East coast or the West coast. Cause we're like South central. Um, but so we have learned enough to know, like we just had this discussion that we need to, in our extreme weathers, very, very hot weather, very, very cold weather. We need to condense our flocks. We need to double up their fences. We need to make it easier for us, not in a lazy way. Like it's still good for the animals. They're still going to have all of the grazing area that they need. Um, but it's very difficult for me. It takes up a lot of my morning in the heat uh, to go to a lot of separate different things um, to feed them. Uh, and that's just not going to work for me. Like I, I put, I try to put on my notice, like I was going to quit. Um, and, uh, so we're going to come up with another plan. Still, uh, broke says still learning what works and whatever tastes good for the family. If y'all don't know, if people watching on the replay and watching on right now, broke is out of Georgia. Are you an uh, 8A out of Growing Zone 8A or 8B? I believe you're 8B. I thought he was pretty similar to us. Yeah, but he has amazing uh, fruit trees. I think this dude is trying to do a nursery on his own uh, on a on a mm -hmm. low note. You're going to be selling some. <laughs> 8A. Uh -huh. But uh, I, I saw that you, I haven't watched this yet, but I'm watching it tonight after I get done with all our chores now. You got a pawpaw tree. Oh, he and wants the, one of those so bad. I know. When I saw it, I was like, oh, I got to watch this. And our, our person uh, that was helping us plan, like, talked us out of a pawpaw because they said that they yeah. attract a lot of flies. So I'm very interested. I'm on curious about the fly thing. Your, uh, your experience with the pawpaw trees there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, so we consolidate to help Mrs. Nick and Gardner because I know it's going to be extremely hot. Uh we're going to be pretty soon be putting up our shade cloth around our garden and our high tunnel, even though our high tunnel doesn't uh, have anything <laughs> going on right now. Yeah. But I just want to get an idea of what it looks like and yeah. how it feels and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, what is going on, CC Texas Garden? Another person out of the Houston area. 
sweet. What's up, fam bammers? <laughs> What's going on, <laughs> ordinary Pete? Hey. Uh, so that's going to help her out, and we kind of have them all closer together because she was taking two to three hoses out to each oh one. Oh, my God. I was dragging, uh, like, he makes fun of me, but it is. It's really hard work, and I will say, like, I used to be a big time gym person, like very structured. So I do remind myself when I'm out in the field and I'm dragging the hose, like it's a workout. Uh, but there's certain heats where it's really not healthy. Um, and it's taking away like in this busy season, I am harvesting, I am preserving, I am editing videos. I am very busy. Um, and I, it's just not healthy. So we have to try to make the outside stuff as easy as possible right now. Yeah, I, I bet it felt like, I mean, this week was hot. I was glad I was in Utah. <laughs> we had the first mm, part I was of this jealous. <laughs> jealous. I, I mean, it was fun. I, uh, the, the guys that we were staying at, the family that we were staying at, I learned how to castrate a pig. I castrate my I first pig. I have a video, pig. a reel that I'm going to release on Instagram with him. It was so funny because yeah. my son and his son, they were like, oh, my God, my stomach. Oh, I'm like, I got to do it because we want pigs. So let me see if I can do it or not. And so I want pigs. And so it, it, was, it wasn't too bad. And so it was, it was quite fun. Uh, real quick, I just came in from the garden, was pulling some red onions and checking on my cukes. Cool. What, what cukes are you growing right now? I have um, the Persian for like the Persian uh, cucumbers. I prefer for my Pickling. pickles. Um, and then I'm experimenting with uh, the, the, the puta canta. Uh, that he likes to say, what'd you say about my mama? <laughs> um, and the uh, Market More 76s, like, I only really want one. Um, yeah. 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 I, you see my farmer's tan? Hey, now this is a what? family show. What? <laughs> I, you see my farmer's tan? It's a family show. I'm the keep real it, worker. Keep I'm it PG-13. <laughs> PG I'm the real worker around here. Uh, with Indian roots, so I like I get like this is red right now. It's gonna be brown brown tomorrow. Uh, Ordinary P said it's been unseasonably cooler for us here in oh Central California. Oh, usually, okay. usually one hundred five plus, but it's ninety nine ninety nine today. I guess that's cool, <laughs> but it's been the warmest it's been. We tried the, the dragon egg. I don't like it, and I saw I saw your video with the dragon egg, and I was like, is this is I, I didn't I didn't make a comment or anything because we did the same thing and I'm like I don't like it. Yeah, we, we started out as foodies, so we try to grow everything that tastes good. And that wasn't a a uh it, it just wasn't it was, it was like eh. it it was seedy. Um but I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Punta Cana. Mm -hmm. Like the recent video he I said that. He was like, what'd you say about my mama? I ain't never heard of no Punta Compta. I'm like, what the? Hmm. We're about to box it up up in here. Mm -hmm. But going back to the consolidation because of the heat, uh, I know we're going to be doing a lot of harvesting and a canning type stuff. And last year's garden was nowhere near what it, this year's garden has been. It's just lush right now. I, I really believe it's the soil. Like it just, we started um, very slow. Again, we're just going into our third year. Um, it's what our second summer season mm -hmm. um, of actually gardening. Yeah, this is our second year being on the property. We should do it. No, we're past our second year. Well, well, we're in our third year. Yeah. No. Yeah, we are in our third year. After a year or two, you're in. Well, so we've been here a little bit over two years, not a full May garden. was our second year. second year, and we were gardening already. We brought plants yeah. and everything. We bought starts, yeah. Yeah. But anywho, uh, since Mrs. Naked Garden learned how to can last year, I uh, wanted to get a lot of paste tomatoes, a lot of squash, and other things to kind of help our food security, uh, just in case the 
blank hits the fan type of ordeal. So, well, I mean, like I, I'm also very like there's certain things that I buy all the time. Um, I I did just uh, post on Instagram today, like last season, um, and we didn't do the mass harvest until like. October, September, because we were a little bit late on those board gaze tomatoes, but they're well known for being the tastiest, like paste tomatoes or dehydrated ones. And I went the dehydrated route uh, because I have a really good, I have the Res 10, um, what is it? The, um, X, oh, I have the Excalibur Res 10. It was give, It was gifted to me by my bonus mom. It allows me to do like mass dehydration. So I was doing that uh, with our Borghese tomatoes last season, like all the time. Um, every time I would like get a batch, I would like cut them up and I would like marinate season oil and then dehydrate. And I was just collecting them. And last night I um, filled up, I want to say like, 10 to 15 tablespoons full of dry of it like I, I ground it down and created a tomato paste and um all of the like it is the best paste i've ever tasted um and as a foodie like i want that for me um i know people are interested in like trying it when i had posted about it um but um I, I really want to secure delicious stuff for us first and then like um, figure out how to do it in a, on a larger scale to maybe share some uh, of the dried powder that somebody could reconstitute into a paste if they want. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we try to stay away from the big box stores. We try to support our local nurseries. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was actually and one's not really a local, it's kind of a big box store, it's called Atwoods. They have a very discount cheap uh, products. We went in there today to get some uh, chick starter feed because we're uh, starting some more chicks, got some more chicks hatching, got some chicks. Uh, That's actually a new update too. Yeah. We're not shipping um, hatching eggs until I want to say end of September. Yeah. Um, we're just at, like, I'm going to consistently hatch them out and they're pickup only American breasts, top table meat birds. And, or if people don't buy them, they're going to be my meat bird in my freezer. Yeah. So, uh, we normally try to go f through them. We don't try to go to the orange box or the blue box. Uh, we do local, uh, we did get some starts for the tomato experiment from HEB. For some of y'all, like CC's Texas Garden knows all about H E B. H E B. Oh, wish yeah. H E B would come up here. But uh, yeah, uh, been ordinary uh, ordinary piece. I've been gardening since 2020. Uh oh, since the pandemic. That's oh, what's okay. up. And we had just started like a little bit before then, like 2018. I want to say. Yes. Yes, we are. Facts, because everyone has a different. Yeah. My family don't care if, for, if it's exotic or not. It's all and like, you know what? That's been the most interesting part of our journey, uh, Broke, because um, like we we are foodies and there's things that, you know, that we taste and compare and think is amazing. But there's so many people that are indoctrinated into the um, big um uh, farming industry and like kind of that's all they know and so that's normal to them um and so that's uh, that's interesting to me when somebody thinks an egg should be white and um or why our egg yolks is a lot darker and stuff like that yeah um I, i'm like won't you read something yeah. but so now that it's getting hot, y'all see me drinking my my water, and most of Ooh. it is through the red real light. It's yeah, ooh, Th that it's is electric. our lifesaver. Yeah, life we saver. during the summer months we down this. We're, right now, this is the one we're drinking on. It's the strawberry one. So it's basically a um, electrolyte mix to help you hydrate your body. 
Uh, they have many different flavors. We're affiliate with them. You can go to our website and check down there and or actually in the or in the show notes below, yeah. you can uh, go to uh, their uh, website and uh, click on our uh, use our affiliate link to get a discount at checkout. But they have different products. They got energy boosts and it's all natural. Actually, I need to do some of these. It's all I natural. I need to get some more. Yeah. I, I, I like literally, that's how, like, because he, he does go to his job. Um, and I am, like, outside, like, working all the day. It's literally the only way. And what it is is that they actually have minerals yeah. in there that um, allow your body to take up nutrients of things that you're eating. So, so many people will... Um, and, and I come from the background. I used to be a trainer, a personal trainer into nutrition, all that other stuff. And when you're when you're doing that stuff and you're growing the stuff that you're doing like we are, uh, you want to make sure that your body is taking those things up. But if you don't have the minerals in your body to absorb the nutrients, it, they, they you don't you do not get the benefit. Mm -mm. Um, we went to the mines of there in Utah and it's all natural salt. All this dark is the minerals. You got your manganese, manganese yes. your uh, zinc. Great. I mean, just all of the minerals that your body needs. And it's great because they make different materials and uh, products just from these salts. They got some fertilizers that we're going to as part of the tomato experiment that we're going to be doing here soon i gotta do oh actually i gotta do a video about that more in that video about that coming up real soon uh what else they got the clay uh bennite clay that's a byproduct uh what else they've got oh i love the clay though because like for us on the homestead um like injuries like little abrasion stuff like that i always have some of that bennite clay mixed up with some water in a in a jar because like any bee sting or certain um, injuries, it just pulls the toxins out. Mm -hmm. And um, like I helped my neighbor across the street with um, rope burns because they were trying to catch their cow that escaped and got like all messed up. And um, it, it just like healed up his hands. So yeah. the Venonite Calais, like there's so many um, minerals in there that are just healing. It just um, pulls pulls out the toxins wherever wherever it's is uh, put put on, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing. They also have a muscle recovery, a muscle recovery um, for those that actually still like going work out. I mean, if you have a homestead, this is, <laughs> this is it's a workout every day for me. This, yeah, like he would like me to be a lot heavier. Um, Especially <laughs> <He would>. on the <laughs> <backside>. <laughs> I tell him you better buy me a golf cart sometime because like I'm out in the field like pulling a wagon walking out there yeah that's a wagon. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> but I'm not like I'm I'm still fit like I'm still fit because I'm physically um busy yeah. and in the garden I'm still doing um squats and lunches um yeah ordinary pete cool appreciate that yeah the the elno website it has our two main affiliate is going to be redmond of course and also uh with gallagher's uh fencing uh they make some awesome fencing very reliable great warranty on those the the biggest thing for me thank you I'll, cc I'll garden you, um with the, uh, the fencing that we have is it's given us immense freedom, um, especially when it's a property that you might not be familiar in all your seasons. Like we're, we're learning that there's a lot of work that we need to do for the water issue that we have in certain seasons. And having that fencing has allowed us to move our animals wherever we want to um set that up have them safe like we train them from like little chicks don't don't try to put some some big chicks you already have into these things because unless you like trim their wings it might happen and make sure that the um the power will pop them real good 
Um, but we, we train ours from a young age on these fences. Um, but it has allowed us to have real freedom on our property to just like contain them and move them wherever we want. Um, and like, I don't know, I think it's been the magic for us uh, with what our goals are for our soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kim says, mix the clay with cayenne pepper and aloe. It's a great paste for shingles, pains, and blisters. Oh, hmm. that's good to know. I have cayenne, uh, cayenne pepper that um, I use in recipes and stuff. So that, uh, that's good to know. Yeah, I hope I never have oh, shingles. Oh, hey, Racing Royal Ranch. Uh, that's my girl right there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Welcome, welcome. She just started her channel. Um, go and check her out. Uh, they are just or she like she's grown up in doing this kind of stuff but is is like finally like sharing that journey on their channel um so i'm i'm actually um excited about like their their journey because they're they're hoping to <clears throat> grow and and um start like on a property like us they're they're kind of like in a smaller like if you're if you don't, if you haven't found your homestead yet, that is a great um, uh, person to chat with. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, we started in a small container backyard garden situation. Not everybody um, that's interested in what we're doing um, uh, starts off with it. Oh, good. I'm I'm so glad, Pete. So she's a friend of mine. Yeah. So uh, also they have Redmond also have regular seasoning salts, of course, being Redmond real salt. And man, I'd be making some great rubs. And if you don't even know how to make a rub, they have their own hickory smoked salt. They have oh, a yeah. cherry salt. <laughs> if you're not salt. good at that stuff, they already got a mix. Yeah, I mean, they have a chef's <laughs> so, uh, smoked salt. And there's another hickory, hickory, apple, cherry, and chef i believe and then they're coming up with some more they have a chef one that i really like so yeah. like if you look at it all and you're like oh that's a lot and i don't know what i want to get the chef's blend and then the garlic uh oh, the, garlic, the salt. garlic salt i i made a post not too long ago on instagram like if i could only get if i could only afford one thing it would, for like cooking it would be the organic um garlic salt that they have and that was my biggest complaint because they have the garlic pepper and like a big container um, and then the organ the uh, garlic salt and like a smaller one. My biggest complaint to them was I want the salt in a big container, um, but we are like dehydrating our own. I'm going to be mixing my own. I'm going to I have the fine salt. I'm, I'm just going to mix my own with my own dehydrated garlic. Um, for larger batches because that's really my go-to seasoning um that makes everything taste great shingles were due to stress don't ever get too stressed out no don't you know what that's fact cc's um i have fibromyalgia i'm very Bless you. Yeah, shut up i'm familiar, <laughs> I'm familiar with stress or emotional distress um, will cause inflammation. Um, and that's caused me to be probably um, heartless and cold. Um, that's what that he said. No, that's what he said. He's <laughs> like, you're so cold. I'm like, because I don't like pain. <laughs> and, um, that way I don't, like most people I know that have fibromyalgia cannot do what I do. I don't know anybody with fibromyalgia that's doing what I'm doing. Um, but I, I have it. Um, I just have to, you know, not care about um, what people think or say. Ordinary Pete uh, says that's my wife and I. They're out of the backyard garden, but we have plans for homesteading. Uh, where do you plan on homesteading at? Uh, we have a channel set up, but no content yet. Man, being a gardener and a YouTuber is one thing. Being a homesteader and a content creator, <laughs> that is another thing. I mean, it's a job just doing the job, but doing the job and filming the job is a whole other job. Man, this, oh man, I, I oh, anyway, 
I, I, I hope you find a good place to let us know where you're going to yeah, be. Yeah, where, where are you guys looking? I'm curious where you're looking. Yeah. Uh, but for to go back to uh, CC's comment, uh, so I, I get stressed out too. My job is very stressful. I, that's why I love when I'm able to come home on the weekend and deal with the gardening. Gardening is my stress reliever. Uh, I love dealing with the animals. That's another one of my stress reliever. Uh, Broke just had a video not too long ago about being stressed and, you know, just being depressed and all that other stuff. Check that video out. And it's it. Bro, put that link for that video in, in the comments. Yeah. Uh, hello, hello. Somebody just came in. I don't know where their comments are. Oh, wait. Oh, there CC. We go. Gardening CC. is my is my piece okay cc's what it is cc girl <laughs> yes mm -hmm. <laughs> anywho <laughs> so, keeps that one straight because <laughs> i will cut y'all hear that mm -hmm. right y'all yeah, heard that. he goes missing <laughs> look for her <laughs> anyway Edition. um uh, I put on earlier this week on our community board about our rabbits. We're going to be, it uh, seemed like a lot of people were interested about the rabbit butchering class. Uh, that will be, we will be either selling or definitely butchering by the end of Jan uh, January. It's in six weeks because July, they're six yeah. weeks old this week and six we, we like to process at 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got a lot of great responses from that and some uh, some uh, negative one. Hey, Rick, welcome from Australia, mate. Hey, matey. Yeah. Uh, extra fertilizer, you say yes. So uh, we will be, uh, yeah, broke me, cracking me up too. I love watching his inspirational videos and stuff like that. The And great tips. The... Uh, rabbits, uh, we're selling those. So we're going to put that uh, after this video. We're going to be uh, posting that uh, class. And it's going to be a good class. It's going to go in depth on first giving a tour of how we do our setups, how we breed our rabbits. Uh, the, the Yeah, people get a tour of like what we're doing. And we, we, we really take a hands-on approach with it. I got um, you, bro. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with this type of thing. And for me, and mind you, like I, I've raised kids. And so, so like this is like kind of my evolution of parenting uh, and teaching people uh, these things that might not be super comfortable, but there's an honorable way to do it. Um, I feel like we take great care in our animals, um, and we only, like, we are very committed to them only having one bad day, um, and it allows us to be self-sufficient. And since our last processing, um, and I don't, I, I don't know if you guys, uh, recall, but I've been the one that was very resistant to the rabbit thing. Um, I guess the more that they're my chore, the less I am resistant to it. Um, but they're, you know, they're really cute and I really like their fertilizer and all that stuff. Um, but I have been doing a lot of really great recipes. I think I have made the best rabbit compared to you so far. Um, that Cacciatore rabbit I did. I don't know that first one I did. I wish I could find that restaurant. Um, I mean, restaurant recipe because that was the no, bomb. my my chicken Cacciatore. I, it I was tricked, good, it I, was good. I tricked your sister, but the His recipe sister loves my cooking, by the way. I know my seasonings, just so you know. And she, like, it was on the second helping. Yes, um, we do treat our animals very I well. Love our we animals. respect them, we give them the best. Uh, quality of life, and they only get one. That every animal besides sage, well, sage probably get one. <laughs> sage, <a cat. laughs> sage will probably get if he keep on, oh. but uh, throwing up on our floor. <laughs> <laughs> every animal will have one bad day. Yeah. Uh, even our elderly chickens that are going to be retiring uh, this year. You're going to retire them in September. Yep. Yeah, they will be retiring. So. 
Oh, we treat, we have all the types of respect for all of our animals, trying to give them the best quality of life. And, and that's the thing with a big, like commercial farming is those animals don't even see sunlight. Like I, I can't, I can't care when I have a troll that has an issue with what we're doing. I'm like, you know what? You're barking like, up, you're barking up the wrong tree. You're going to a homesteading channel thinking we should not eat animals. Hello. We were vegans for a year before we did this. Hey, Sherry, how are you, hey. love? What's going good on, David? You. David. So good to see you guys. Uh, so, Brooke said, smother rabbit or fertilize. So, okay, Brooke, you know about the uh, smother rabbit. That's what's up. What's it? Like, is that a certain recipe? Or? Oh, is it smother rabbit? Like, smother pork chop? Smother, oh, oh. smother chicken fried? So it's, it's how I'm cooking it mostly. Like, I really <laughs> like it in the crock pot. <gasps> what? You mean her? She's the twerker. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, that's in private. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it PG. This is PG channel. Peeps don't get it. Yeah, they, they just don't get it. Uh, let's see. When you process your chicken, you can tell if your birds are stressed. They have extra fat on them. Well... All of the chickens, except for our American breast. Now, we different. treat them different. We make sure they, the last two weeks, they get an extra fat. We ferment their, their feed in corn and raw milk. So, yeah, and there is a difference. Um, I feel like, uh, for, like anybody that are, um, oh, okay, before I answer or continue what I'm going to say, I, Kim, um, how old are your hens when you retire them? In and the there's different answers on this, but we went to the APA conference, um, which is all about pastured poultry, all about what we're doing. That's why we became involved with them. And there's people that are doing this on a much larger scale. Um, all of us together are trying to come together. That's why we're in APA, um, to come together as a community to try to... Um, compete with uh, commercial farmers, which we can't. We cannot compete with the prices that are in like Walmart and stuff like that. But our quality is way better than theirs. All of us together have way better quality needs. Yeah, we, we sell our chickens and the people are just amazed how juicy they are. And when you do a pasture poultry chicken, even if you are the worst cooker, even if you overcook it, the meat is still juicy. That's why you should always, always try to look for a local farmer to get your pasture raised poultry. And that fencing that we use allows us to do that. Like we're moving our chickens on new pasture. So we're not having to deal with static coops and medication. Our animals don't need to be medicated mm -mm. because they are, you know, in healthy They're getting air. sun. They're getting that vitamin D. They're getting that nice grass. They're getting the, uh, the bugs. And we just supplement their feed with fermented feeds. So. And the taste, you can't, you just cannot, like, I, I, I hope you guys find your most local pasture poultry uh, chicken person and just try it. So to answer your question, Kim, out of that whole thing that she went on. So 18 after 18 months, we try to retire our chickens because after about their two year mark, their egg production starts to decline and they are already stew chickens at that point. Yeah. Um, so we'll be raising them as a stew chicken. And what stew chicken basically means you just put them in a crock pot and you use it for uh, chicken and rice soup, uh, chicken pot pie. Uh, chicken and noodle soup. You just put Which it is in. Which one the, of my preferred ways to cook? Yeah, excuse yeah. me. You just put in that crock pot. Let that meat, all uh, the tendons and the muscle, just break down very slowly, so it's still nice and tender, and be able to fall off the bone. And then, mwah. it's very tender. Um, and I have become kind of bougie about that. What you need to delete that video, woman. Oh yeah. No, she should no. share it. She should share it. Um, Appreciate but, you, Sherry. <laughs> Um, uh, I have become a little bit bougie about the, um, the slow cooked, uh, older, uh, stew meats. Now that I've had the American breasts that way, uh, total, total, like extra level of flavor. 
So we use Gallagher fencing. Um, uh, now you can use any type of fencing. I, I hope Gallagher is not watching this, but you can use any type of fencing. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna oppose you on that because Gallagher only goes up to like a hundred uh, linear feet. Um, uh, or no, the premiere one only goes up to like a hundred. I don't know. I can't speak no, on the footage. Everybody that's yeah. talked to me has said that, but uh, Gallagher is 164 linear feet. I don't know. That's my checked, preferred size. I haven't checked on premiere fence, so I can't. I not. want you to know the audience. 164 linear feet for about 30 birds is appropriate. Yeah. And we like to double ours up so we don't have to move them every week. Yeah. But, uh, but the, the, the Energizer is what makes Gallagher the best because they have a three-year warranty on their pro on their product. Well, any products they have uh, a three-year warranty. And with us during the springtime and the fall, we get a lot of rain, which means a lot of overcast. So with our Solarizer, it's a lithium battery, and it still put a good charge even after day day three of uh, overcasting. And now, and speaking of that. Uh, they have a garden uh, fence, a garden kit. So if you're getting rabbits, squirrels, deers, and stuff like that, uh, attacking your garden or eating your garden up, we got a video that's going to be coming out to show you how you can set that up. We first got it for our garden, but since our Top Gun crew has been trying to escape off our homestead, we use it for that particular reason. So do you have the link for our Gallagher, um, for David Corey? Um, yeah, right there. There you go. Okay. There you go. I want to make sure, um, because you'll get a, a discount on that link. Um, there's some stores that carry some of, some of their products, but not like all, but right now, um, my preferred setup is the 164 linear foot, uh, poultry netting um, and either the S12 or the S30 is the newest one that has a, a real pop on it, especially when we double up our fences. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on what your um, your goals are. Not everybody. Some people are just doing this in a backyard kind of way. You want to keep them out of their garden. Um, so, you know, the smaller things are fine for that. Um but um, if you have, you know, a, a, a decent size, more than an acre or about an acre in an acre, 164 foot, that, that would give you space to kind of like move them. And you can kind of like figure out how often you can move them because you don't want your uh, birds in the same space within how many like um, uh, yeah. I would well, say you got, eight to 12 weeks. You, you have really have to look at two two. Uh, things when you're having your chicken. One is looking at how are they on that particular grass. If they're just tearing that grass up, you need to move them more often. Mm -hmm. uh, That's but, what we really pay attention to. Yeah. And, but at the same time, you don't want a lot of that because chicken poultry or just poultry itself from chickens, ducks, geese, they their poop is very high in nitrogen. So you don't want that uh, heavily onto your uh, particular area. So that's why you want to move them all around. And that's going to help build your soil. And when you have a good chemical balance in your soil, it's going to prevent weeds from uh, popping up, which is going to improve your pasture or your area that you are moving them on. So that way it's even more nutrition, more protein, uh, a lot of the vitamins and nutrients that your animals are going to uh, be able to take up, which means if they're eating good and healthy and you're eating them or their byproducts, then that's going to help you uh, as well. And as gardeners, I utilize that um, that situation when they have that sectioned off area as I'm about to move them. I really pay attention to the weeds that they have no interest in and I pull them. Um, so like over time, what up, Kurt? uh, Hey, Curtis, um, over time, I am like weeding out the, uh, weeds that are of no benefit to us. 
So Kim said, okay, good. Thank you. I have eight hens that are three years old. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they long they're overdue. Ready. They're ready um, to go to freezer camp. But bone broth, like I make bone broth monthly um, in big batches. Uh, I do like at least every month, nine to 12 quarts. Of and that's what I drink in the most of the time in the morning or tea in the morning on um, my long commute. So yeah, so if anybody ever has questions about bone broth, I I feel like because I've been talking about it quite a bit in a um, a home setting group that I'm in, I feel like I have a very efficient plan um, for doing it and the lifestyle that we have. And you just made some rabbit broth, didn't you? Um. So I call it bone broth because it's got chicken and rabbit. Um, okay. But I could do a separate. Um, but until that last bone broth you did was, I meant to tell you. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Happy Father's Day to you, and Happy Father's Day to all of the uh, viewers, the males, fathers is out there, not the females all, that all the are single, uh, yeah, single don't mother. Be trying to do that. All the males out there, whether you're a good father, now hopefully you're a good father. No, only I, I'm only going to say Happy Father's Day to the good fathers. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so like I said, if you're interested in signing up and coming and doing the rabbit butchering class, we will also be selling rabbits. Uh, show and, you how in, to in our hold class. On, hold on. We're going to show you how to uh, take care of the rabbits. Uh, how to butcher the rabbits and and everything of that nature. We don't skin them, uh, or we don't hide, use their hide for whatever. Pr we do skin them. We don't. We do use skin their them, hides. but we don't use their hides because with the Tamuk rabbits, that's a, a Texas A and M of Kingsley. They're bred as seven different breeds of rabbits for this Texas heat. They're meat uh, meat rabbit variety, and uh, their their hide is too thin to to pelt or whatever they call it now i think some people have tried it i'm just not interested yeah in the labor however somebody mentioned to us happy father's day to you rj if you are a father uh somebody did mention to us oh, when we did that video we didn't do a, uh, a how-to video because that was our first time doing it on our own um that we could use the rabbit's feet and the rabbit ears, ears as a dog dehydrate them and use them as a dog treat so yeah i'm curious about the that process mm -hmm. yeah uh, all right hey my girl celebrate me on father's day being a single well uh, uh, okay um uh, I'm, I'm i'm on a different one of that one cc but well, we could talk offline about that. Anyway. Okay. You had your day. <laughs> uh, last thing is the website. Like I said, our website is active. Uh, we are selling, um, we're building up our products. Uh, we're going to be putting, I'm going to be making some more soaps, uh, some more body products. I'm going to try my hand in some of the older brands because uh, Redmond, real salt they have a, a ingredient or recipe for deodorant so i'm interested on trying to see how that works yeah we use their products in all of our soaps now <laughs> i know right bro <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh on mother's day you know what i got from this dude I, and we don't have kids together okay you know my mama what what did i get for you father's didn't, day you didn't do nothing is it Father's Day? What did, what did I get last year for Father's Day? Can I say that? Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what did I get for my birthday last year? <laughs> Why are you trying oh, to... I'm just like... saying, you really... This is like you real salty about Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> and you ask me about stuff I can't say. <laughs> oh, man. There's a website right there. We're going to be dropping a lot of stuff. Uh, body products, uh, meat uh, for the people out in our area. We can't, I mean, we could sell or ship out our meat products, but they're just going to be way too expensive. So what I would suggest is go, uh, there's a app called Farmish. Farmish. Um, and you know what? They asked us to be like an affiliate and I didn't, I didn't 
sign up for it. Yeah. But um, if Farmish will give you an idea of who you might have within your vicinity that might be doing some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, check with the APA app too, because that will help you locate. There's no APA app. Huh? No or not app. APA, their website, APA website. I'm sorry. Um, Apple website because it will probably help you. <laughs> so that's cute. Hey, I, I should have gotten that for Mother's Day. You did get flowers for Mother's Day. We're talking a different language. Um, you, anyway, CC knows. Ow. <laughs> um, uh, I'm but so abused. Um, on the Apple website, uh, you may be able to locate like the closest uh, farmer near you. <laughs> Cece knows. <laughs> okay, girl. <laughs> um, but uh, that will have like some of the pasture raised type of products that we have. And I really wish like, especially for a lot of people that follow us, um, you know, we always have to come back to this where we came into this as foodies. We selected certain chickens just for flavor. I'm selecting, like I just did that tomato paste last night. We selected that tomato to grow just because it was supposed to be like the top thing. Like everything that we do is about flavor. We're not the only people passionate about that. And we're not close to everybody that follows us or engages us, but there are people just like us near you. And you're going to find them for, through a Farmish app or through um, the APA organization or even people that do FARFA. FARFA is another organization. We didn't even bring this up that I really want to become a member of because they're making it easier for people that are doing what we're doing um, to become more competitive with commercial farmers because we have been limited um, and marginalized by um, a lot of restrictions like the USDA and all these other things. And there's a, a lot of things going on right now to try to allow us to do more things. Um, but FARFA is one of them. So please try to support FARFA in your state. Kim, what, who is that question for? Are you asking us or any of the members that's in, in the chat? Most of everybody in here, their screen name is their, is their channel, is their yeah. YouTube channel. And we're the Naked Gardeners ID. Yeah. ID, not Don't ED. go to ED. ED. It's not the PG-13 kind. Yeah, and it's uh, like... <laughs> Wendy Willows Garden just popping in, excited to call it live, uh, not just... I don't have animals yet, but I'm building the shed shelving from the video y'all did that intro. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, what animals are you thinking about getting? Uh, you seem like a shower gel guy. Actually, I used to be. He's I, a soap that he made guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Man, you know what, bro? I wish I knew you when I was... Uh, he was in Georgia. Yeah, I was... What's that city called? I was working out of... You don't remember? I, I'll try they to They had a whole apartment for him just over a year, and I was, like, going to visit him every other weekend, or he was coming home every other weekend, and um, it was not very far from Atlanta. Well, nothing's far compared to Texas. I mean, no, but seriously, you were having to go... Um, I think it was always like 45 minutes northeast of Atlanta. Um, and that, that was actually during our, I guess, over just over a year of gardening. <clears throat> I was a little salty, <clears throat> sorry, because he started a garden and I wasn't with him as much because I was taking care of the garden he started because he couldn't be there to take care of it. Um, it was... A dynamic, yeah. Yeah. The uh, meat rabbits first. Awesome. That was the first animal I wanted to get onto the homestead. They seem cheaper to set up. They they are very cheap. They're low maintenance. I mean, all you got to do is feed them like a half a cup a day. I'm appreciating the fast turnaround time for meat right now. Yeah, it's eight eight to twelve weeks. Actually, you could even harvest them as soon as twelve weeks. I think six good. six weeks. 
12 weeks is uh, six to 12 weeks. You don't want to go past 12 People weeks. People are doing it up to 16 and say it's tender. Um, I'm not interested past 12 weeks. And anything past 12 is considered a broiler, and but we keep it basically as 12 weeks. Yes. You'll get more meat and bang for your buck. Um, where, where are you located at? The Windy Willows Garden? But okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I was reading the um comments. Oh, yeah. So that is all that we have. Anybody else has any questions? I do worm farming now. I'm a I'm up to eight. Oh wow. I yes, I love Captain Matt. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, he made I... the same like tool that he did. I did a um a reel actually um on Instagram uh of the the tool that he uses to sort the soil out now for our worm castings. Texas Garden Meetup and Center. Okay, that's not too far. From. Hopefully it's in the off season. Right now we're we're in busy, busy, busy. So if you're in Louisiana, okay. you're really not that far. Um if Are you South Louisiana or North Louisiana? Um, and I only I only say that because we are going to do that rabbit class. Um, so mm -hmm. if you are serious about rabbits, consider joining us for that class. And you have to get to the end of July to have your your. Uh, We're about hutch. to make the announcement, so just be on the lookout. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so route the rabbit poop. I'm going to have to be able. I want to learn how to capture and harvest the rabbit poop because. These rabbits here, they it won't be unless people are okay with other because other byproducts in there because some of their hay and feed kind of gets into their poop. I don't have time to shift out or sift out their their feed and stuff, which is all natural, still organic matter, so you can still use it and spread it out there. Actually, I need probably tomorrow I'll take their poop out I now. The be flies right now between the rain. Oh, the flies are oh. horrible this year, but one rabbit could poop about a pound or a gallon a week. Uh, yeah, be between five rabbits, we're getting five gallons of poop a week. Yeah. Central, she's a, where Cajun dies out and Redneck takes over. That's <laughs> too funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's flavor there, but no, like, I'm, I'm about that flavor. How far are we from Texarkana? Oh, um, well, if you, Matt far. Paris, Texas, uh, like we've had people travel further from than Houston, that. Houston, from just, Oklahoma. Just to come to some of our chicken, chicken classes or to buy chickens from us. Um, we've had people, like, I think the furthest uh, one was like six hours away to get some of our chicks. Oh, um, okay. How far is that? Yeah, two, for about two oh, hours. Let's just under, oh, yeah, about two hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that bad. If you, I mean, if you're trying to learn a skill, and that, that's something like when we jumped into this, um, any animal we considered having, we had to take a class before owning that. Mm -hmm. um, so we learned how to butcher chickens before we had chickens. We learned how to uh, butcher rabbits before we had rabbits. Um, I'm going to be like that. I like I was very afraid of pigs. And now I'm like on this pig bandwagon. Um, and I think it's scaring you a little bit. Um, it's scaring me. One thing that we've always said before we even got into this homestead, because we uh, we had mentors in Georgia uh, with Big Bear Homestead, and we told ourselves when we were uh, mentored by them was never get an animal unless it we already have a shelter from them. And yeah, we do not do chaos. Um, mm -mm. People, we would have like all kinds of, if people have tried to give us animals, no. The answer is no. If I do not have a place for the animal, um, if I do not have a setup for the animal, I am not going to have the animal. Uh, oh, first, let me get to this question. We got people in Austin. We're, we're it, on our website, it has our address, uh, thenakedgardeners.com. We're in Paris, near Paris, Texas, in Lamar County. From Austin, we're probably about five hours away. He drives there all the, like, yeah. He drives like in the Colleen Fort Hood area every week, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have goats. We realized he we wanted them. Yeah. We wanted, uh, well, I wanted goats. She wanted sheep, but 
Uh, we just don't have the pasture. We have a lot of pasture, but we don't have the correct pasture for goats. They like to eat a lot of stuff from the neck up. And we have a lot of pasture where it's basically made for the other uh, animals that like to and that's something important to consider when you are thinking about animals. Oh, I want this. I want that. Also consider like, what do you have? Um, and that was a hard lesson, right? Oh, yeah, because I was. Because he really wanted goats. <clears throat> um, and I was so like, I can't tell you how, like, I was like, <sighs> when he realized <laughs> that <laughs> lambs were better uh, for our property because I love lamb. Anyway. I feel like I won the lotto or something. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah. As much as you win other arguments, I'm going a, I'm to a take that one. As long as you know I've won my arguments. Because Not that much. 80% of the time, I'm 100% <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I love a class just on planning our property. There is so much, um, and I, I feel like that's been part of our thing in, in, in sharing our journey uh, because, you know, we have it in our head like, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this when we got here. You have to be open to maybe what you think it needs to be is not the best thing for what your property is. is. Um, I will say this uh, after two things. After talking with our guests from last week, they were very experienced um, homesteader, gardeners, farmers, what whatnot. They were all in, want to get all these animals and different things of nature. Then after a while, they learned to back away and got rid of those animals. Another thing we were told was never build, when you get your property, never build a permanent structure to after your third year. And we are learning that right now. We're, I'm glad we haven't done that. Yeah, we haven't built any permanent structure. All our structures for our chickens and animals have been, besides the rabbits, but that we could still move that around, yeah, but we wouldn't. But all of that has been able to be moved. And gladly that we can, because the way our pasture is right now, a lot of it is like flooded, saturated, and we would have been kind of figuring out how to, uh, deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, I'll learn you some stuff. Yeah. Spell it. You'll see something. You uh -huh. might be, that's some bathroom okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear sheep can be mean. Funny if it's true, because I always think uh, sheep and goats. Goats are very escape artists. Sheep are very skittish. So if you have, if you have uh, goats, your neighbor's going to have goats. Um, if you have sheep, um, like my thing is, is I don't want to have to be hands on. I have a lot of stuff to do. Like some people want goats because they want company. Um, I don't have time to sit there and hang out with goats with all the stuff that we have going on. Um, but sheep, uh, sheep can tolerate rain and we are in an area that gets rain. Goats do not like rain or water or things like that. So you really have to consider, um, again, what kind of seasons you have, um, what kind of pasture you have, uh, what's going to work for you. Like when you go to the store, do you buy goat meat? Do you, I mean, you go out of your way to buy goat meat? I would. Was, I know you would, but you don't. Um, but I, I always buy um, at least twice a lamb. month. Uh, we'll, lamb we'll is get, a, buy some lamb product. Yes, I love lamb. Um, oh, I am thinking more with milk and skincare products. Good to know about sheep and and the rain. Now, something I didn't know about sheep is some sheep is good for milk, and then they use that for feta cheese. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can a uh, milk sheep, of course. I'm not, but their fat content in their milk is not as great as goats and cows. So. Yeah, we've learned a lot more um, about sheep in the in the way of uh, the meats. Like you want a hair sheep for good meat. Yeah. Um, and to get are, rid of that gamey taste. Yeah. If you get the wool sheep, it has more of a gamey taste because that wool produce. A chemical that gives it that uh, gamey taste. Yeah. 
Um, so there's only a few breeds of sheep um, that we would even consider just for good quality tasting meat. Um, but I haven't done the homework to see which one of those is also good for possibly um, milking. Yeah, because right now we've been told the best tasting sheep right now, as that we were told, is the painted desert sheep. So and we're interested in that. Um, and our friend that has them has them. He hasn't. He hasn't yet. Oh, He's, he doesn't have them. No, because I was like, man, Can I can't taste them. No, he just. Does he? Okay, so yeah. All right, I need to taste it. Yeah. Um, before we go, I'm old now. Um, so I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> my little cougar baby yeah. um, but uh i i don't um i really don't want to go through a whole thing like i want to learn from other people's mistakes mm -hmm. so so we shall oh, excuse me i got the hiccups now so we shall see so the old man indigestion we talked about whatever consolidating our flux the red men and kind of threw in the gallagher fencing type stuff uh, we're got the got garden kit coming out uh, pretty soon or garden kit video coming out pretty soon, even though we didn't use it for the garden, uh, but you could use it for the garden and it will help out tremendously if you have any rabbits, sheep or rabbits, deers or whatever attacking uh, your your garden. We, we I watched um, uh, stray dogs get popped. Yeah. The, yeah. uh, we talked about the rabbits, our butchering class and the wellness class. After this live is done, I'll set up the um, our website to for people to start attending. Signing up and, for that class. Mm -hmm. And then the, the website. So if y'all don't have any other questions, uh, we'll end this. If you do have questions later on, you can always, always either hit us up on Instagram, the same handle, the nakedgardeners.com. Uh, you can email us at Team Holland. Let me see if I have that. Power to the Cougars. I saw that comment. Uh huh. You didn't read it. Oh, I don't have the thing on there. Oh, well. Uh, what did it say? Power to I got four years on my hubby. You got four years on me, too. <laughs> he's, he's fantasy. I got two months on him. Eleven. And he makes Ooh, it. You're no, a super cougar. He, he makes it seem like I got ten years on him. And so I'm like, respect your elder. Then mm -hmm. every chance I get, mm. respect your elder. <laughs> you should listen. Uh, so uh, Danny, you you like mm -hmm. you need a cape. You got a, a super cougar uh, power. You're with. really jealous. I am. I'm not really. I'm about a year apart. <laughs> Two months, I'm telling you. Two months, 15 days, and six hours and 25 minutes. Anyway, uh, like I said, hit us up on Instagram. Team, put yeah, it. anytime you have a question about something, if you're considering it, like do what we did. Like before we even did this kind of stuff, we asked people that had been doing it. Like we were investigating, asking questions. So if this is the life that you want to live, <laughs> we are open to answering your questions. So hit us up and ask. Uh oh. So all these cougar women's in this. What the? What's going on? Who's going on? <laughs> he he always wants to say I look a lot older than him too. At what age can you start fermenting uh, your chicks feed? You could start. Oh, you can start um, right or, at six to eight weeks. You, you can six start, to eight weeks. I I think is a good time. You could start immediately as soon as you get your chicks. You can start it. You can start it. Oh, okay, folks. That's what's up. What's up, Kim? Folk? I'm gonna start calling you Kim Folk, folks. It's easier than <laughs> Wendy Willow's Garden, WWG. Yeah. What's up, Kim? Folks, yeah, you can start it immediately. You meet bird feed, hit us up and we can answer some. Yeah, questions. just put them in some water, cover it at least two inches. You could cover up to six inches if you feel different kind of skinny. seasons. Is going to be different on that. Yeah, it's a learning curve. And they're during the Texas summer months, they, more they, water, they, it ferments a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, like I say, if you have any questions, hit us on my Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, still the naked gardeners. Uh, 
we're on TikTok, but I don't know how we get the messengers. Immediate questions and stuff. It's best through Instagram. Instagram and email. Yeah, email so, for sure. Yeah. So until then, put our email in there. I did. Okay. Good. Right there. Baby. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Boom. Boom. So until the next video, we might do it live next Saturday. Depends uh, what we get. Oh, no. My daughter's going to be here, so yes. I don't know what's going yes. on. Yeah, so we probably won't do another. We normally um, will do it. We'll, we'll post it. Yeah, she, she, I, I might do something with a video with her. She is coming from Hawaii. She's a tattoo artist and um, is coming to Dallas to see some clients. And I might have her pierce my nose maybe he said it's like huge um which i know um but uh i don't care i don't care about decorating how huge my nose is i love your nose no shut up anyway until the next video let's grow together <laughs>